Okay, grade levels, welcome to the second lesson in week 35. We'll be revising in preparation for your final exam. And in this question, we're going to, this video, we're going to be looking at some long questions. So it says, a block Q of mass 70 kgs, okay, 70 kgs, is at rest on a table. It is connected to block P by means of two light inextensible strings. Inextensible means that they don't stretch. So that means we don't have to worry about that. Okay? And they're knotted at S. A third string is arranged in such a way that the string connecting block Q is horizontal as shown in the diagram. And the coefficient of the static friction, so mu S, is it says between the block Q and the set of table is 0,25. So mu s is 0,25. And it says the knot s is in equilibrium, which means that nothing is moving. There is no movement if it's in equilibrium, which means that these three forces balance. Okay. The tension in the string connecting block Q2 is T2, and that of the string that pulls is T1, and this is at the angle 35 degrees. And it says to find the term static frictional force in words. Now guys, you need to go and look this up in your notes, but basically your static frictional force is the frictional force that basically keeps this object static. Or you could say it's a frictional force that the object experiences while it is stationary. Okay, then it says explain what is meant by the knot S is in equilibrium, which I've already told you. This means that there is no movement. Okay, there's no movement and that all three forces, T1, T2, and the force caused by this P, which is actually the weight of P going downwards, are in equilibrium, it means that they do not move, okay, and that they are balanced. Now it says draw a labeled free body diagram to show the forces acting on the knot S. Okay, so remember free body diagram is a dot, a colored in circle. And then all we're doing is drawing the forces. So do you agree there is a T1 up here? There is a T2 over here. And there is the force of gravity due to P, the force of gravity due to P down. And those are your three forces. So that is the labeled free body diagram at knot S. Now they want the free body diagram to show all the forces on block Q. So this was S, now let's do Q. So admittedly we've got the force of gravity due to the mass of Q, but there's also the normal force, F normal. That's the table holding the block Q up, and these are equal and opposite in direction. Then we've got a force of friction, and how do we know this? Well, we know that there's a force of friction because they tell us that there's a coefficient of static friction, and also because everything here is stationary, so the only way this can be stationary is if there's some friction. And then we've got T2 this way. T2 is moving that way. Okay, now grade 11's most important thing is these need to be drawn in pencil, okay? And you need to use a ruler. If you don't use a ruler and it's not neat and tidy, you are not going to get your marks. So please, guys, use a pencil and a ruler. Now it says calculate the maximum weight of block P for which block Q will just begin to slip. So do you agree that if block P moves, when a block Q, I mean, what if block P causes block Q to move, then it's just overcome this force of friction. So we can say at this point that T2, which is pulling this way, has to equal the force of friction because it's just making it slip. It's just a little bit bigger, but so close that we can say it's equal. Because these two forces are equal and they're not in the direction of movement, so you can ignore them. So now grade 11, so here's a hint. If they ask you to do the free body diagram of knot S and the free body diagram of block Q, chances are we're going to have to use a combination of these two when we work out this, okay? And that's exactly what we're going to do. 
because they want to know what is the maximum weight of block P for which block Q will just begin to slip. So if I had to rearrange the forces on S into a triangle, do you agree we've got the force of gravity of P or the weight of P, we've got T2 which is this way and then we've got T1, T1 and this angle is 35 degrees. Okay, I'm just going to rearrange it in this. So that's the force of gravity due to P. Okay, so this is your triangle of forces. Okay, what's going on over here? But now we know that for this to just start to slip, the T2 has to equal the size of the force of friction. So this equals the magnitude of the force of friction. Now the force of friction is given by mu s f n. Okay, where f n is in the same as the force of gravity in this case. So the mu s we know is 0.25. The f n is the mass times gravity and we know the mass of this is 70 kgs times acceleration to gravity due to gravity is 9.8 so let's use our calculator for this. So we've got 0, 0,25 times by 70 times by 9.8 and that equals 171,5. That's 171,5 newtons. So therefore T2 this dude here is 171,5 newtons. Now we've got this angle is 35, this is a right angle triangle and we want the weight, we want to know what is the maximum weight that is needed for this to just move. So therefore we can use Sokotoa, so Sokotoa, and I know that some of you prefer the sign rule but I prefer Sokotoa, it doesn't matter which way you do it as long as you get the right answer. So if we're using the angle of 35 degrees, this is the opposite side and we know the adjacent side is T2 which is 171,5 so I'm going to use tan, so I'm going to say tan of 35 degrees equals the opposite side which is the weight of P if you want to think of it that way over 171,5. Therefore, 171,5 times by tan of 35 degrees is equal to the weight of P. And now I need my calculator. So I've got 171,5 times by tan of 35. And that equals 120.0855. But remember, you always round off to two decimal places. So it's 120.09. So it's 120,09 newtons is the weight of P. Now the final thing you need to do is always just check if they've asked for weight or mass. So they've said calculate the maximum weight and weight is in newtons, so yay, we have finished. The maximum weight of P to which makes this just slip is 120.09 newtons. Right, grade 11s, that was quite a nice question. Please make sure you can do these questions and make sure you know your definitions and how to draw free body diagrams. Have a great day.